Good afternoon everyone. I hope you all had a green day if you traded. I'm going to go over the daily plan as well as the live market commentary I provided through StockTwits. Uh, if you don't already follow me there, I will leave a link in the description uh, or that's my username. So going into the morning, the first thing I posted as I usually do is a TPO chart. So I said, look at that folks, TPO is trying to warn us of something for this upcoming session. Can you see it? Very important. You need to know this stuff. Uh, so what was I talking about? Uh, if you watched uh, any of the past recaps that I've done over the past week, um, I went over it again yesterday. Last week we built balance and we could see that using our TPO charts. Um, we broke out of the balance, that was that rally. Uh, after we broke out of balance, we tested the high balance, uh, confirmed to us that we were no longer trading in this market auction and we were going to go up. So that gave us confidence. Um, to trade accordingly last week outside of the balance. And with CPI, um, or before that, we were just um, rallying. We, we weren't building balance anywhere. So once CPI numbers came out, we were not in balance. We came straight down. Um, and what I'm trying to point out here at 350, or 3950 rather, we were just teetering on the top of this uh, past balance zone, dipping into it. And what I was trying to point out here, uh, what the TPO is telling us for this upcoming session is um, we are right on top of the balance zone. So if we accept value into the balance, as I said in yesterday's video, we are likely to test the bottom of the balance zone. Uh, do, don't quote me, but I believe the bottom of that balance zone was 39.03 or 02 and a quarter. Uh, so, you know, if we accept into it, we could expect another 50 points down. Um, so very important to pay attention to the opening session, see where value is being built. Because we, as I said, we're literally just teetering right on the top of the balance zone. And something else to take from the um, TPO, market structure. Um, uh, very important to keep in mind if we make our move up. So... Um, I had a lot of people interact again today, which was great through stock twits. I had some questions uh, that I said I was going to answer in the recap, um, and I will. Hopefully, I don't miss any. Uh, so from the TPO, we went to the four-hour chart. I said, who's underwater? Where are buyers and sellers positioned? Uh, so let's look at it. <coughs> so we could see, I hope clearly, that buyers are trying to hold this here. and from here, sellers are active, very active here, but they are stopped, got ran, thin volume nodes pop up, exhaustion in the clouds since we are uh, downtrending. I don't trade off moving averages or anything. Uh, I mean, sorry, I don't trade off moving averages, but when we're in a trending market, I do like to gauge them because they, uh, I feel, are respected much better. And depending on the context around it, maybe they can provide a trade. Uh, this isn't a trade that I took, but just confirming that we're still trending exhaustion at the top. After running the stops, we're going to come down. And where are we going to come down once we run stops? Uh, we're going to come down to the bottom of the trading range and see once we ran the buyer stops, I mean the sellers rather, we're going to see if buyers are going to defend their positions or what. So. We know that they're positioned here, positioned there, uh, and who's underwater? Well, we had a huge down move yesterday, and we know that there's a lot of buyers underwater. Um, let me double check. I think there may have been a question here. I don't remember. So uh, learning to trade here is saying that we have the buying balance at 39.45, which is absolutely correct. Uh, what else do they say? Um, we have a selling balance at 55.60. I'm going to take his word that that is the same price that I was just saying. Uh, I said, depending on how much volume comes in and the footprint at this level, we could go to 70 to 80. And I just said 75. Um, so if this holds, I believe. Um, don't quote me, I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, but he's saying if we defend here, we can expect to move to around 75, which is um, right in the center of this volume node area. Uh, and yeah, he's right. Just double checking. 
So, uh, of course, he said it too. It depends on the volume. It depends how much volume we're going to accumulate here, but you have a rough estimate. If we accumulated a lot, uh, you know, say we did another 33,000 contracts done here, uh, then we wouldn't really look at this as significantly because we would have so much volume to the uh, uh, on the buying side that this is really negated and we want to see bigger numbers tested. Um, yeah. Hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't make that confusing. And lastly, before I posted my daily plan was, uh, I said, and now lastly, before posting the daily plan, I wanted your attention to the daily frame. Here you can more clearly see positions of market participants who, uh, also who is trying what and where. So this is obviously yesterday's daily candle and we see some exhaustion at the end as well as uh, somewhat of a bid. Now, going into this daily candle, we're going to want to see if this bid is active or maybe this is just short covering. Uh, this photo or the screenshot, I posted this at 8.53, so this is probably literally a screenshot at 8.52 or 8.50 in the morning. And already we can see on the footprint that we're doing a lot of uh, transacted shares on this volume node, so chances are we are going to visit a little bit lower because we're going to want to see some exhaustion. Um, but again, we're going to want to see uh, a bid here. And in the morning, we have a lot of volume here. Not so much a B, but something to keep an eye on that maybe this is going to become a bid and uh, let us know for higher. Uh, as well as that, um, helping with targets. You know, we have these high volume nodes and then through the footprint on smaller, smaller time frames using the TPO, we could derive these uh, more accurate buy and sell zones, which um, this sell zone ended up being the low of the day, at least at the time of uh, recording this. And this ended up being the high of the day, again, same um, as of the time that I recorded this. Um, so next up, I posted my daily plan. And you can see these two, the sell zone and the spy zone that I uh, just said, which ended up being the high and low of the day. I said that I personally would not take them. So uh, for good reason, I had someone ask, why did I take it even though I said that I wouldn't. And I'm going to show you guys here on the footprint, watching the order flow live. We could see that there is exhaustion. Uh, so it did give the confidence to end up taking the trade. So uh, without further ado, let's keep going. Um, I believe, yep, went over that already. Uh, little update. Uh, you know, I've been talking about the room. Uh, I've been, I created the website, you know, I've been going through to create the now discord and I've been writing, uh, webinars, um, cause there's a lot of info. Obviously I, I'm not sharing everything that I see on the TPOs and footprint and whatnot. Um, but in the room I will, in the room, I'll go into much more detail, uh, of the market auction theory and all that stuff. Um, so update for everyone who's interested, I've quite a few people reaching out. I'm going to come out with a video a week from today, so Wednesday the 21st, and I will give everything that the room's going to include, what I'm going to be doing, um, everything. I know there's a lot of unknowns. People have been asking a lot of questions about it, but one week from today, you'll know everything. Uh, and then I'm just going to be on vacation for a bit, and then once I get back, I'm going to finish uh, anything that I may have not been able to finish beforehand, and I'm shooting for October 1st. The room should be open, so it's exciting. Okay, back to a four hour candle. This is now right after open. I said lots of volume done here. We should know what is above. So uh, looking at this, all this selling that's done. Uh, let me finish reading this. Lots of volume done here. We should know what is above. If trade below, buyers will need to add or defend their position. Uh, look at 45s. So 45s around here, what we were speaking about before, where we have an active bid since what I'm talking about is all this volumes, now we're into the open and look how much selling volume is now here after the open. Um, so what I'm saying is once we come into 45s, buyers will have to add a lot uh, because we have a lot of selling volume. So they're gonna have to do their job, do their part, add to the position to uh, win this battle, if you will. If they can't, well, then we're gonna see the first buy zone. 
and uh, that is what happened, I believe. Uh, we chopped around a bit before we went down, but eventually we did reach that buy zone before we hit the sell zone. Uh, so now I brought to the open 30 candle. I said, look at that open 30 candle so far. Uh, where is the volume? Important to know the stuff when trading. Um, looking at the candle, where's the, we're trading right here first at uh, 39.68. And look at all the volume. All the volume is underneath, lots of volume underwater. Uh, to keep a note. So uh, if you're watching this in real time, uh, for uh, a better example, if we're trading up here at, and we only have this amount of volume done up here at, uh, you know, in real time, and we have this much down here, you could bet your house, your dog, anything that uh, I'm not short in here. I'm going to be waiting until uh, bigger hands are on my side and I could see that the majority of the volume is now doing selling, buying is exhausted, and it's time to go down. Uh, you do not see that by any means here. Um, and the first half an hour trading was as I said it could be. Uh, I said in the daily plan, don't be surprised if we have a sleepy opening session. There was a big move yesterday. Market may want some time to digest. And in the first half an hour, that's exactly what happened. It was, uh, I hate to use the word choppy because all price movements in trading, there's a reason behind it, but you know what I'm trying to say. It was sleepy price action. Uh, did I skip something? Yes, I did. Okay, here we are. Uh, so this was the close of the open 30 candle, and I said, look at the volume. So again, we see a majority of the volume right here, all underwater. Do see some temporary exhaustion with the zero print, and that is why we started moving down. Um, <coughs> sorry. So what do we want to see here? Uh, we close a, a majority of the volume. So what does that mean? This is the majority of the volume in that open 30. So when we come down into this candle, uh, come down in this candle to this volume, what are we going to want to see? Or what are we likely to see? Well, we're likely to see all these people who are shorting here, we're selling, you could see uh, 17.9 thousand contracts, 16.8, 12.7, a lot of contracts being sold here. And for all those contracts that were sold short, uh, their positions are underwater. We're going to come down and them covering their shares mixed with uh, traders who are trying to buy high volume nodes. Uh, a lot of people try to trade off strategies like that. Uh, they're going to put it in a floor and we'll test higher and see if the selling is real selling or it's just people uh, covering and being blown out of the water. I said, see how using the footprint, uh, we could go to smaller time frames like the five minute here and see exactly where market participants are located. We could then infer stop losses too and take advantage of it and trade with market makers who are running your stops. So <coughs> obviously 930 candle here and we could see that there's bid support trying to hold here and sellers are trying to put a ceiling here. So uh, if we're trying to take a long, we're going to want to see all these longs be stopped out to about right here. Uh, and that's where you'd be looking for the long. And now if you're looking for the short, you're going to want to see these sellers stopped out. And you're going to want to see uh, a seller jump in here and take a trade with them. Um, the best risk reward trades are get or entering on stop losses. You want to see most traders being stopped out and you want to enter. Uh, if they're buying, you want to be um, buying their stop out. If you're selling, you want to be selling uh, seller stop outs. Again, I hope that makes sense. I hope I am not making it confusing. Um, and so I asked what that was and learning to trade came in and I believe he got it right. He said lots of volume under the candle close. Those who are short at the high, uh, those high volume levels are underwater and need to cover raising price in the next candle. Um, so if we go, nope, oh, never mind. But yeah, yeah, he is right. And I said exactly, you see how we dipped into it, uh, buying and balance came in and we bounced eight points. And this is what I'm talking about. So this is a four hour candle, but this was that high volume node nodes in uh, the 30 minute that we're talking about. We dip into it, buying and balance, it's held. Uh, if you zoom down to a smaller time frame, I know if you're looking at this right now at a, in a four hour. So it looks, you know, there's a lot of transacted shares. We might go lower. And that's when uh, going to smaller time frames will help you. You'll see the the exhaustion there and you get a nice play off of it um, 
totally valid trade, uh, one that I personally did not take. I, I, that's not my setup. <coughs> um, lots of clues on the daily footprint. Look where our market participants are dug in. We'll go into more detail later. So after a move up, we had some exhaustion here. So now we're going to come down. We, as mentioned before, we did have a lot of um, transactions down here, so we can expect lower. Uh, we're not seeing any B type of formation. So even though we're trading down, nothing is telling you that we should be buying any dips yet. And this is when we traded into this level. Uh, again, I said originally that I wasn't going to take this. And uh, again, I'm going to show you why I did. But uh, we came down into it. And as we're pulling up, we had a nice buying and balance come in. Uh, quick tape entered right there. I had uh, I had my limit order already set, but I didn't place it yet until I saw that. And as soon as I did, then I entered and I got filled right on 37 and a, and a half. OK. So I said, or now it was 20 points off the level given before open. Uh, why was it okay to take it? Look at the daily candle. It tells you all we need to know. Uh, now, of course, there were more clues on smaller time frames, which I'll get to. Uh, but even on the daily, look at this. We came down and we saw some exhaustion. Now, uh, when we're in like a, a very cautious buy zone or sell zone, um, nine times out of 10, what I am doing is I'll take the trade if if the footprint says that I should, and I'll pay myself sooner. So on normal trades, I take partials at 10 points. Um, now for something like this, I'll either take that first partial at five points and then move my stop to break even and try to trail the rest, or I'll just go out of five points depending on what the tape is. Uh, in this scenario, that is not what I did, and that's why I'm going to go to smaller time frames because it gave me the confidence to hold um, and it kind of <coughs> the tape kind of said that this could be more than temporary exhaustion. We could actually get a move. So let's get into the charts. Uh, this is the five minute, and this was let me change this color so it's more appealing. This was the buy zone, and we are coming down. This is I believe is where we're talking about before buyers sellers and seller stops are ran. Zero print temporary exhaustion pull up zero print come down. Um, See, uh, sorry, I just love the footprint. We come down, we could see that there's temporary exhaustion. We know that price is going to come up. It sure does come up. We get another zero print. I, again, I don't take trades like this, but there are plenty of guys who I know who are snipers on the tape, and they'll be scalping for, you know, two, three points and can just get so many price fluctuations. So it all depends to, on your trading. Uh, but anyway, enough blabbering. Uh, we had this aggressive move down and uh, on this aggressive move down I wasn't really looking at the uh, five minute I was looking at the daily I saw once we came down into here um, we were getting some extension towards the lows at the close of this candle we were getting extension on the daily and it was starting to look like we might get exhaustion this candle opens you know we're bouncing around right here people are building volume right here and then what happens we take one more dip down, we get the exhaustion we're looking for, and as we pull up, bouncing right here, we get a flood of volume come in, we get the buying and balance with our exhaustion below, and that was the cue for my entry. Um, and what gave me the confidence to not hold this as a scalp was once we came up from here, it was pretty much, um, you know, I hate to use this word because of how Reddit affected trading, but it was like a rocket ship up, really. Um, thin volume nodes were running and you could see that where there were previous sellers thick volume nodes uh, people are trying to add trying to sell here uh, so it paused here for a second I was ready to have my break even in uh, stop loss and we eventually popped them so we're good smooth sailing in the trade close the candle with the selling imbalance not too much exhaustion so uh, we want to monitor this open open on this candle get a nice zero print buying uh, and beautiful um, 38. Oh, I already had myself paid at uh, 37 and a quarter or 47 and not a quarter and a half here. Um, so my after I pay myself my first um, target price, I always move my stop to break even 99% um, of the time. I guess not always, but pretty much. 
uh, and we're smooth sailing until this um, our initial sell zone. So I took, as I said, half off here, and then I took pretty much everything off at 60, and I believe a larger time frame will help uh, as to why I did. So let's try seven. All right. So why did I take off at 60? Well, we could see highlighted, ignore this candle, obviously, because this didn't happen at the time. Uh, we're looking mainly at these two candles. We had large volume nodes right here, and I was looking to just take this off at the 60. Now, uh, what also you could do is maybe, if I'm planning on taking 50% off, I'll take 25% off, see if we could accept into this uh, high volume area, and then I could take that other 25% off at the top of the high volume area. Uh, but I like to play it safe, you know. I already got my first target price. Uh, I'm not scratching for every tick necessarily in this case. So I just took it off at 60. And then from there I moved my, so I was only trailing one contract after uh, taking the 3960 partial. And then I moved my stop loss from break even to plus four ticks or a point in the money, or I was actually targeting for 93, I think it was. Um, but as we'll go through, I took it off sooner. I actually made a mistake in my exit. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Uh, but I'll show why I messed up and how I messed up. Uh, this is just me saying I took off whatever, as I said here. Uh, in the video, I said, see how sellers are trying to defend their position. So now we're coming up to where we had sellers active. This is a daily candle. Um, if they can't defend their position properly, um, well, their stops are going to get ran. So you could see these volume nodes are being built out a lot, lots of selling and balance. Um, let's see, maybe there's questions under here that, okay, what platform? Um, to anyone who's wondering, I think I've said it before on the YouTube, but I use Sierra charts for this. Uh, Sierra is not the only platform that has footprint charts. Um, there are others, I just, Sierra, in my opinion, is the best. It's the one that I've come to use, be, have came to be used to. Whoa. Uh, tr tr all right. Okay, zooming in on a smaller time frame, we could see how sellers are trying to defend their position, right? So back to a five minute, we know that sellers are active here, we're coming into it, and how we were just looking on the daily chart, how sellers are trying to build out their volume nodes and defend their positions, we could see this on a five minute. And you could see how they're trying. We have some exhaustion, some exhaustion, and uh, when we come down, you know, the there's a bid, they're holding it. Uh, we're starting to trend up. You see we're respecting the cloud. We shoot up, they try again, and they are ran through. Now I asked, whoops. Um, we should all know what the nodes circled means. Anyone? Um, so we have sellers and then we have thin volume nodes once they're popped. What is that? That is, you could say with almost certainty uh, that this isn't ordinary people buyers and sellers, you know, transacting back and forth. This is a stop loss. This is all the people shorting here. Uh, they are just covering and tripping over themselves to get out. And then we have the climax of the covering here. Uh, was there anything else? Nope, don't think so. So I entered them there. Uh, and this is how the footprint gives confidence to stay in the long. We close the 1030 candle above most of the participants. Now next candle opens and we get a zero print with buying in balance. Now 15 points higher. I will cover exactly why that happens in the video recap later. So I actually <coughs> went over this a bit here, but we're looking at a 30 minute candle again. And at this point I'm in the long still from here trailing that last contract. Uh, we get this candle close. Yes, we do have a selling imbalance, but we're not seeing exhaustion at the highs. So we're going to want to monitor the monitor. Sorry, geez, uh, this next candle open. And what we want to see, well, we have the cloud here. We know we're trending now. And we also have these high volume nodes. So when we pull into here, we're going to want to see a bid. And that's exactly what we see. Actually, we not only see a bid, but we see extreme exhaustion with the zero print. 
gives us the confidence to stay in the long. Now, if we accepted price into this high volume area, maybe you're going to cut it. I personally wouldn't. Uh, I would cut it if we lost this high volume area, retested, then rejected, then I would cut it. Uh, but yeah, the footprint really helps us uh, immensely with uh, monitoring trades, entering trades, pretty much every aspect. Uh, yeah. And what happened? We continued up to this first sell zone. We had temporary exhaustion. Uh, I didn't take the short because uh, I was in the long. I was still trailing that one contract. And my reason for not flipping short here was because, uh, sure, we do have temporary exhaustion. But I wanted to see um, sellers really dig themselves in here and show that the move is over, which they eventually did, is why I cut the trade. Um, but I was willing to risk these points of pulling back for the potential of getting more reward and being able to take it off higher. Now, um, this is another trade that you can take once you see the exhaustion on the tape. You can take the short here and either, as I said before, you know, pay yourself sooner or monitor the tape super closely and see if you see either sellers moving down or um, as buyers not uh, defending their position on the way down. So yeah, valid trade, just didn't take it since I was on the opposite. Tape is telling me to move my stop. So I am new trailing stop on last contract um, from break even, actually it wasn't at break even, it was at 39.38 and a, and a half uh, to 39.61. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here on, you know, I said yesterday on executions, but also uh, I have very strict rules for myself on uh, stop placement, moving stops and all that. Um, so the tape, you know, what was telling me first, not to get into every aspect, but I touched on it here. It was seeing sellers move down, seeing these volume nodes build out, uh, it's telling me that we might revisit lower. So I want to protect my profits and move the stop up. Um, yeah. And now I s did not follow my original plan of uh, my new stop. I actually cut it a little bit higher. Uh, and this was the wrong decision. I should have cut this higher. So let's get into this and see where I messed up. Uh, probably go back to a five minute. Uh, let's try five. Yeah, it looks good enough. All right. So I'm in this trade. Uh, we see the exhaustion on the higher time frames. I'm sure if I adjusted my volume alt, I'll see it here. Um, but so let's mark where I exited. I said at 67. So I didn't exit in this candle. As we were coming down, I saw sellers moving down on the footprint. So I made a newbie mistake and thought that this was time to cut the trade. Uh, and this candle, once we pop back up at 67, is where I cut it. So what mistake did I make? Um, yes, we do have sellers moving down, and I posted that on stock to a screenshot, but sellers are moving down on the five minute. I'm not making trades, um, or at least I'm not managing my trades off a smaller time frame like a five minute. Um, certainly for entries, yes, on a smaller time frame I am. But when I'm in a position of managing it, I want to look at that daily candle. And we didn't see that yet. Um, not only that, but you could see people were trying to support this here and we broke down. We left thin volume here so we know it's likely to be backfilled and that's exactly what happened. That is where I should have exited the trade. Um, so two mistakes of mine, um, not seeing this until it was too late um, and not really listening to my rules because I, I do have rules in place to do that. So just to show that I don't get it right all the time. I don't think uh, anyone does. Yep, 
so I just went over that. Uh, so learning to trade was asking why I entered there, and I hope I answered uh, in a clear way of why I did enter the trade with the exhaustion on the uh, daily, I believe it was. Uh, and that's everything. That was that was the only trade I took today. Um, I didn't take that short, as I said. That was everything. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. Hit 75, su 75 subscribers today. Uh, thank you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow in the next recap.